Hello. Today we're discussing Parsha Vaikra. This is the first Parsha of the book by the same name, Vaikra, which is the third book of Tanakh, the five books of Moishe, Moses. Moses. Now that the Mishkan has been built and completed, the Parsha begins with God's, uh, God speaking to Moshe and um, in the Mishkan, basically, and um, tells him about the sacrifices, the Karbanot. Um, and he tells him that this is going to be a very important part of the service in the Mishkan mm -hmm. later on in the temple. We learn about various types of Karbanot in this Parsha. The first one is the ascending offering, the Ola. That offering is completely burned uh, on the altar, on the fire. It's a, a total offering to Hashem. And at the beginning of the parsha, Hashem discusses with Moshe the laws of um, those sacrifices regarding the cattle, the sheep, or goat. Then there are five varieties of meal offerings, mincha, prepared with fine flour, olive oil, and frankincense. Descriptions of three types of voluntary meal offerings unbaked flour, baked loaves, and the shallow fried meal offering. All voluntary offerings uh, also contained uh, olive oil and frankincense. Uh, then Parsha discusses Amer offering brought on the second day of the Passover, at the time when we start counting the Amer, the second day. God instructs the Jews to add salt to every animal sacrifice or meal offering as a symbol of everlasting salt covenant with him, with Hashem. We are also commanded not to include any leavened items or items containing honey in any of the temple offerings. Then Parsha switches to peace offering, Shalamim, whose meat was eaten by the person who brings the offering, as well as the Kahanim, and part of it was, of course, burned on the altar. And it was shared uh, right there in, uh, in the Mishkan or later on in the temple by the altar. The Shalamim offerings could be brought from cattle, sheep, goats, and obviously, as I said, shared by the altar. And then um, the, the discussion switches to um, the sin offering, Hatat, which is brought to atone for transgressions, committed by mistake, erroneously, by the high priest, or the entire community, or the king, or any ordinary Jew. Then there is the issue of the guilt offering, Asham, brought by one who misappropriated property of the sanctuary, or who is in doubt as to whether he transgressed a divine prohibition, uh, or who has committed a betrayal against Hashem by swearing falsely, or committing fraud against fellow men. And these are basically all the different types of uh, offerings, of sacrifices, karbanot, which this parsha discusses. There is a question. Why God instructs Jews to add salt to every animal sacrifice or meal offering? Salt is, on its own is not eatable. No one wants to sit and to eat a spoonful of salt. Obvious. We could handle sugar straight up, no problem. Or even over our salad, we could put a little bit of salt. But salt can be tolerated only in small doses. And added to food 
but cannot be eaten by itself. So what is the salt in our lives? Torah says it is the discipline, it is the rigidity, it is the boundaries and borders that are so necessary in small doses. We have, we have to first add the sugar, the sugar called things. And, and we use many times more sugar than we use salt. But it is actually the salt that brings out the sweetness of the sugar. It is the parental love of putting limitations in place and saying no to the child when required. You see, everything is intertwined in Torah. And Hashem saying you to use salt. What he is saying to us actually that all our prayers are spiritual sacrifices. And the level of our honesty and faithfulness, emuna, is what makes a difference for him. The level of our ability to feel our intentions, our love for Hashem. Rebbe Sachs, for instance, and uh, Rebbe Jacob Shinitz, who obtained a yeshiva university and is a member of the rabbinical assembly, they write very interesting things in their respective articles, and, uh, but both of them come to the same conclusion. They say that the prophets of different times were actually against sacrifices. Well, you will say, hold on, Chaim, how that can be because half of the Torah is talking about sacrifices and the importance of, their, of, that, of, that, uh, of that ceremony and all the, all the sacrifices in the service to Hashem and the importance of it to Jewish whole spiritual system, the whole spiritual system of Judaism. Well, let's look into it together. Isaiah was dismayed by the people's superficial ceremonies and sacrifices without inner repentance. Isaiah begins by crying out on the Lord's behalf and saying the following. What need have I of all your sacrifices? Your new moons and fixed seasons fill me with loathing. And when you lift up your hands, I will turn my eyes away from you. The same, we read Isaiah's passage um, before the Tishibav. And this is what he says. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong, learn to do right. Seek justice, encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of fatherless and plead the case of the widow. Again, he is referring to the sacrifices and saying, you know, unless you do the sacrifices with your heart in place, with your intention and your neshama really directed towards love of God and love of Torah, these sacrifices are not worth anything. Then prophets are not against sacrifices. They are against false sacrifices. They are against just, you know, the, 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 the sacrifices for show. That's not just good enough. Hazia says the following. For the children of Israel shall sit solitary many days without king and without prince and without sacrifice. Mourns Hazia. So the prophet does not condemn sacrifices. He regrets the absence of sacrifices. And in response to empty ritual, Hazia declares, For I, God, desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. It is obvious the, the prophet is railing against those sacrifices without mercy and knowledge of God, not against sacrifices itself. Um, Amos says another interesting thing. I hate, I despise your religious feasts. I cannot stand your assemblies. Even though I bring me 
you bring me burnt offerings and grain of offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice peace offerings, I will have no regard for them. What the prophets are telling us? That's the sacrifice without your heart and your neshama intention and longing to love of Hashem, to love Hashem, is not good enough. In today's world, prayer, tzedakah, Torah study, all of these are aspects of what we call our substitutes for sacrifices. But all of them, without proper intention and burning desire to love Hashem, are just not good enough. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next parasha.